Well, good evening, folks. We're glad that you're joining us tonight for our live stream and our Wednesday night worship time. And uh, as I have the last uh, several times that we've met together in this kind of a setting, I would encourage you that as the worship team leads us in song, just sing, us, sing along with them, worship the Lord with them. And uh, when they finished up, I'm going to come and have just a short uh, devotional type teaching for tonight. Uh, and so I'll be back in a few minutes. But until then, just join in with the worship team as they lead us in song.
Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that you are you're here with us and we're confident that you're with each one who's listening in to this, this live broadcast. And we just pray that as we continue now looking into your word and, and learning from you, that your spirit will guide us, your spirit will speak to us, your word will help us to grow and know more of you and trust you in a greater capacity. Father, we thank you for your love and your goodness to us. In Jesus' name. All right, friends, welcome back. We're going to just jump right in here to, uh, to our Bible study for the night. Again, thanks for worshiping with the worship team as they led us in song, and I'm glad that you uh, are here, and um, I hope that you sang along with the worship team as they led us in song. I want to just open us in a word of prayer and uh, remind you that shortly after this, we're finished here at, at right about 7 o'clock. There's going to be a live stream of some kids' ministry stuff. It's a, it'll be a second segment of a uh, children's ministry piece that we're doing uh, from here at the church. It's just a short thing, and that'll start at 7 o'clock, so you want to tune in. Have your kids or neighbors or grandkids, whoever, uh, tune in with you to watch that. But for now, I'm going to just open uh, uh, with a word of prayer and then uh, just kind of walk through some Bible study kind of thought, devotional thoughts. It's not a real deep study for tonight, but we'll jump in that. Let's just bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Father, I thank you, and I pray that, that you will help us today and help us every day to pursue being mature in our faith. Lord, help us to be passionate in our relationship with you and with those that you place in our lives. I pray that you'll help us that we would be open to the transforming power of your Holy Spirit and to be conformed into the image of your Son. Lord, it's in His name, that name of Jesus, that we pray. Amen. So I'll tell you a little story as we kind of get started tonight. There was, uh, there was this young boy who he built a toy sailboat, and he would take that uh, to the park every day and sail that little boat on a pond. And because he loved his boat, he was always very, very careful not to let it go uh, too far out onto the pond. But then that inevitable day came when the boat sailed just beyond his reach. He'd gotten himself soaked, completely soaked, trying to retrieve that little boat. But it, it had just gone out too far for the little boy to be able to rescue it. He went home that afternoon just heartsick, just broken, expecting that he would never, ever see his little boat again. Well, just a few weeks later, he, he was uh, walking through the downtown area of their little community when he saw the boat, his boat, in the little secondhand shop in the downtown there. He was so excited he could barely stand it. He's, he ran into the store and he starts yelling out at the top of his voice, You found it! You found my boat! I, I made that boat! It's mine! And I would really, really love to have it back. But the man behind the counter he said, Well, son, it might have been your boat at one time, but today, right now, it's my boat. And if you'd like to pay a mere thin $20, you can have that boat back. $20, the little boy said, because you and I would know $20 to a little boy, that would seem like an enormous, unheard amount of money. He had no, little, no clue on how he could ever come up with that much money. He started hanging his head and kind of kicking the floor as he walked toward the door of the store. But the owner then said, hey, son, I'll make you a deal. If you'd like to earn a little extra money, maybe enough to buy that boat, I could use some help here around the store. And so the two of them made an agreement. They shook hands and everything. Every week, the little boy would come in and sweep the floors, tidy up the shelves, take out the trash, and in return... The owner would give him a few dollars for his services. 
Finally, the day came when he brought his pocket full of crumpled up bills into the store and bought back his boat. He was so thrilled to have his boat back. As he walked out of the store, holding his little boy, like a, his little boat, excuse me, holding it tight like a long lost friend, he said, you are mine twice now. You were mine the first time when I made you. And now you're mine again because I bought you. Now think about that, friends. Think about that just for a minute. Before God gave the Ten Commandments, He made this statement. He said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt where you were slaves. So in that statement, God is reminding His people that not only did He create them, but He redeemed them. He bought them out of slavery. That is the relationship God had with Israel. That is the relationship that God desires, friends. He desires to have that kind of relationship with you and me as well. We are His because He created us. And we are His because He bought us. He paid the price for us to be freed from slavery to sin. He created us, and He's paid the price of redemption for us. And that relationship is the basis of the commands that God gave to Israel. God led the people out of, out of Egypt, and He led them through the desert. And now as the commandments are given to them, they're just another way that God leads His people. You see, the first and foundational commandment is this. There is one God, and you shall have no other gods before me. These words, and with these words, God commands his people to worship, to love, and to serve only the one true God, which is him. With this first commandment, God makes it very clear that his people are to have a relationship with him. You see, God sees our relationship with Him much like a, like a marriage relationship. Friends, we are His church, called as the church, called as the bride of Christ. It's not enough for anyone to stand at the altar and say, You'll be my forever girlfriend. The words are really forsaking all others. And if either spouse does not forsake all others, it will spell destruction for their marriage. There's only one God, friends, the God who is revealed to us in the Holy Scriptures. And He is calling us into a relationship with Him. Have you allowed other gods into your life? Where do you set your affection? In other words... When your mind takes a break from all the complexities of daily living, where does your mind come to rest? Like a compass needle, which through, though it may be spun around, it will always come back pointing to true north. So where does your mind point when it comes to rest? What is really important to you? Where do you spend your free time? What do you think about when you're thinking all by yourself? What do you long for in the depths of your heart? What are you really living for? We're told in Colossians chapter 3, I'm going to read verses 2 and 3. It says there, Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. And then the Bible goes on to tell us things like, We are a new creation, a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old has passed away, and the new has come. And by the way, that's part of the, the larger kids' lesson that's being taught and will be a part of the live stream tonight at 7 o'clock. Uh, your kids will learn about this new creation and the old passing away and the new coming. I'd really encourage you or your kids to tune in and watch that, podcast, or that live stream tonight. So the first commandment exhorts us to be in a relationship with God. And that God should be our first in every aspect of our lives. God should come before everything else in our lives. 
The truth is, when we lose sight of this first commandment, we lose sight of God. We must be mature in our faith. We must stop praying generic and vague prayers. Spiritual maturity requires us to move into faith praying. Something like what Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. Father, not my will, but your will be done. That's a deeper commitment of prayer, a deeper walk in a conversation that we're having with God. We must have a, a passion for who we are in Christ Jesus. I'll tell you another little story as we start thinking about wrapping this whole thing up. There's one day a young disciple of Christ, uh, desirous and wanting to become all that God had in store for him, visited the home of an elderly Christian. He had heard that this old man was who was well advanced in years, had never ever lost his first love for Jesus. As he showed up to visit the old man, the, the guy was sitting out on the porch with his dog, taking in a beautiful evening sunset. The young man sat down and posed this question. He said, why is it, sir, that most Christians zealously chase after God during the first year, maybe two years after their conversion? But then they, they somehow seem to fall into this complacent ritual of church once or twice a week and end up not looking much different than their neighbors who aren't even Christians. So I, I've heard it said that, that you're not like that at all. I've been told that you have been fervently sought after God, seeking after God throughout all of these years of your life. People see something in you that quite honestly they don't see in most other people, most other Christians. So what is it that makes you so different? The old man smiled and he said, let, let me tell you a story, son. He said, one day I was sitting here quietly in the sun with my dog and suddenly this large white rabbit ran across the field in front of us. My dog jumped up and took after that big rabbit. He chased that rabbit over the hills with passion. Soon, there were other dogs from the neighborhood that joined in because they were attracted by his barking. What a sight it was at that pack of dogs running, barking across the creeks and up the stormy embankments, through the thickets, through the thorns. Those dogs are in hot pursuit. Gradually, one by one, all the other dogs dropped out of the pursuit discouraged by the course, frustrated by the chase. Only my dog stayed in the hot pursuit of that white rabbit. Now, he said, in this story, young man, lies the answer to your question. The young man sitting there scratching his head in complete, confused silence. Finally, he said, sir, I'll have to admit, you're talking way over my head. I don't have a clue what you're talking about. What is the connection between the rabbit chase and my quest for God? The old man says, listen, son, you, you failed to understand because you failed to ask the obvious question. And that question, that obvious question is this. Why didn't the other dogs continue to chase that rabbit? And the answer to the question is this. They had not seen the rabbit. And the question is, are you in a relationship with God, friends? Do, are you right now? Ask yourself, am I really in a relationship with God? Do you, do you know Jesus? Are you maturing? Are you growing in your faith? Is your passion for Him ingrained in your very soul? See, the Lord instructed us on how to live that passion when he said, you shall have love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You shall love. And friends, how can we love? How can we not love? How can we who have encountered the risen Christ do anything else but love and follow Him. Only those who have encountered Christ, 
Those who have seen and experienced the risen Lord have the commitment to continue the chase. Only those who, who have encountered Christ will persevere and finish the race. And finish the race well. John Wesley once asked the secret about, was asked the secret about his own ministry. And he said this. He said, I asked God to set me on fire and let people watch me burn. So friends, my prayer for your life and for my own life is to ask God for his holy fire, to let it burn, setting each of us on fire with a passion for him and his will to be done in our lives. A passion to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen? Praise God. Let me close in prayer. Father, thank you for this day, for your word to us, and I pray that you'll just allow this to burn deep in our hearts. Help us to continue to ponder on this. Help us to love you with all that we are and to love our neighbor as ourselves. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for tuning in tonight, friends. We'll see you again Sunday morning live at 10 o'clock.